Lesson 11, Pareto Chart, Example 1. Use the political party affiliation data, question 2, from our Sierra College Elementary Statistics Student Survey to construct a frequency Pareto chart and describe the result. So here we're asked to construct a frequency Pareto chart. A Pareto chart is a bar graph constructed from qualitative data, where the categories are arranged in order from highest to lowest and drawn in a way so that the bars do not touch each other. The statistic of interest that we're going to display in this Pareto chart is the frequency. After we construct our frequency Pareto chart, we then need to describe the result. So to begin, whenever constructing any sort of graphical method, we need to come up with a title. The title needs to describe both the data, in this case the political party affiliation, and the population from which the sample is collected, in this case Sierra College Elementary Statistics students. So a title that would appear on our Pareto chart could be Political Party Affiliation of Sierra College Elementary Statistics Students. Now to construct the actual Pareto chart, we need to draw a vertical and horizontal axis. And each of these axes need to be clearly labeled. The horizontal axis is the data axis. So we need to label it with the data, in this case, political party affiliation. The vertical axis is where we label the statistic of interest. In this case, we were specifically asked to do a frequency Pareto chart. So to complete the labeling of the frequency axis, we need to know the frequencies of each category. So here we need to look at the actual data and count the number of students who identify themselves as Democrat, Republican, Independent, and other. Now we had already done this in a previous example. So we'll just use the resulting uh, frequency distribution table to help us here. So the frequencies range from a low of 4 to a high of 21. So when we label the frequency axis, we need to be able to cover this range from 4 to 21. Frequencies are counts, and counts always begin at 0. So the minimum value that we label on the frequency axis is always 0. The maximum frequency that we label is based off of the maximum frequency we observe in the sample. In this case, there were 21 students who were Republican. So we need to count on the frequency axis from a minimum of zero to a maximum of 21. If we were to do this one number at a time, the frequency axis would be very crowded and wouldn't be very easy to, to read. So we need to come up with a scale that is much easier to read. In this case, we decide to use a scale of five and counting by fives along the frequency axis. Other choices for scale would also be perfectly acceptable. In this case, the maximum frequency was 21. We need to use a multiple of five that extends past the 21. In this case, 25. So as we label the frequency axis starting at zero, counting by fives, we would go zero, five, 10, 15, 20, 25. And that clearly labels the frequency axis and covers the whole range of frequencies for this sample. Now we can start to make the bars in the Pareto chart. The first bar is based off of the data that is the highest frequency. That is because Pareto charts work for qualitative data. And in this case, political party affiliation is qualitative data that falls at the nominal level of measurement. And nominal data doesn't follow an order. So there really is no order to place the data here. That's why the Pareto chart decides for us to put the data in order from the highest frequency to the lowest frequency. In this case, the highest frequency was Republicans. There were 21 Republicans in this sample. So the first bar is labeled Republican, and it's drawn to a height of a frequency of 21. It's the height of the bars in the Pareto chart that communicates the statistic of interest. So we label the first bar Republican, we draw it to a height of a frequency of 21, and there we have it. The next bar is for the next highest frequency, in this case, Democrats. So we label the second bar Democrat and draw that bar to a height of its frequency, which is 10. We also make sure that the bars do not touch each other because we want to communicate that each of these political parties are separate categories. So we label this bar Democrat draw it to a height of a frequency of 10, and we draw a space between the Republican and Democrats. 
The next group are in the independence, of which the frequency was 9. So we label this bar independent, we draw it to a height of a frequency of 9, and we leave a space so that the bars do not touch. Finally, the last category is labeled other, and the other had a frequency of 4, so its bar is drawn to a height of 4. So here is our completed Pareto chart of the political party affiliation of Sierra College elementary statistics students. Now we need to describe the results. Now you may look at this shape and say, oh, it's asymmetric, and it extends much further in the positive direction. So this would be considered a positively skewed shape distribution. This should not be done with qualitative data that falls at the nominal level of measurement. Remember, the order in which these bars were placed on the a horizontal axis was based on their frequency, not the actual data values. There is no order to political party affiliation. So any sort of pattern or shape that we see in this data uh, cannot be used in the special language that we have for describing shapes of distributions. Instead, with qualitative data, the best we can do in our descriptions is just to report results that can be directly derived from the data. In this case, we notice that the most uh, political party affiliation represented was Republicans, of which there was 21, followed next by uh, almost an equal amount of Democrats and Independents, of which there were 9 and 10, and then finally the remaining others were just 4. So one description that we can give of this result would be most of the 44 Sierra College elementary statistics students surveyed 21, identified themselves as a Republican. There were about the same number of students choosing Democrat, 10, as those who selected Independent, 9. The remaining four picked other.